Hello everyone, today we're going to go over drawing sprites in Raylib using the draw texture family of functions. If we take a peek inside the Raylib header and we can see that there's a ton of different functions here that start with draw texture. We're going to go over most of these functions today. However, quad, tiled, end patch, and poly are going to be covered at another time. Before we start drawing textures, we need a texture to draw. I'll declare a texture 2D called Atlas. And after init window, I'm going to assign it to load texture and give it the path to a PNG. I'm going to be using the Apple Atlas from our Apple Catcher video. In draw, I can use draw texture with the Atlas and I can just give zero zero for the position and a tint of white. And we can see we're drawing the full Apple Atlas in the top left corner of the screen. Now for draw texture, draw texture V and draw texture X, we're always going to be drawing the full texture. These three function calls are all performing the exact same draw. To show that, I'll offset each one by the height of the texture. Draw texture V allows us to use a vector 2 instead of the X and Y components. So if you're already using a vector data type somewhere, this might be more useful. Draw texture X requires the use of a vector, but it also gives us a rotation and a scale value to play with. So unlike the other two, I can double the size of the image here. We can also try giving it a rotation, something like 45 degrees, but it's not going to look the way you expect. This is because the default origin of the image is going to be the top left corner. So any rotation that we do with draw texture X is going to rotate about the top left corner of the image. If I was to do 90 degrees here, I might expect it to be a vertical line along the left edge. But what I'd actually get is the image would become completely invisible as it would be rotated off screen. Another problem that I have with these functions is that we're always drawing the full atlas. In my case, my atlas is kind of like a sprite sheet. It defines multiple sprites in one image. So if I'm drawing the whole image all the time, that's not really the functionality I'm looking for. I'm looking to draw one of these apples. For that, let's take a look at draw texture rec. Draw texture rec takes the atlas like before, but now it needs a new rectangle source and it is going to require the use of a vector. For the source rectangle, we're going to define the region on the texture we want to draw from. In the case of my apple texture, I know that this whole image is 300 by 600, which means that each apple is going to be 60 by 60 in order to fit on this image. And I've spaced them out so that if I want to draw a certain apple, it's going to be a multiple of the width of a single apple in from the left. So the first apple is at 0, 0, then we have 60, 0, then 120, 0, 180, 0, and 240, 0. And those each define the top left corner of where each apple is. Then since each apple is 60 by 60, we can use those values. For now, I'm just going to draw the first apple, which means I only need to put 0, 0, 60, 60. Hitting play again, we're now only drawing the single apple. But what if I want to use the rotation and scaling that we could use with Draw Texture X? Well, now we're going to have to step up to Draw Texture Pro. This is probably the most useful Draw Texture function, and it's the one I end up using all the time. This is because it's going to allow us to use a source rectangle, but it's also going to allow us to specify a destination rectangle. For now, I'm going to make the destination rectangle exactly the same as the source rectangle. We also need to provide a vector to origin, which in this case, I'm just using as a zero vector. And we can also provide the rotation, but again, I'm just using zero. I want to make sure that it's still looking the same as it did before. And there we are, the same good old top left corner apple. Now, as we discussed before, if I rotate it by 45, it's not going to give us exactly what we expect. It's going to start to clip off of the screen. Again, this is because it's rotating from the top left corner. But now we can control the origin. I'll make the X and Y value of the origin half of the destination rectangles X and Y. Now the apple is at least rotating the way that I expect, but the new problem is that it's mostly off screen because we're drawing it at zero, zero, and we're saying the middle is actually the middle, where we used to say that the middle was in the top left corner. So we need to adjust our destination accordingly. Instead of putting it at zero, zero, I'm going to put it at 30, 30. Now this is exactly the look that we wanted for the apple. The next thing is I want to be careful because I'm using a lot of magic numbers here and we don't know where any of this is coming from. Think of it this way. A single apple size is 60. So where I put these 60s, I can put apple size now. Now for the destination rectangle, if I want to draw it at exactly the same size as the source, then we can use the source width and the source height. Now the destination values aren't really magic values. I wanted to draw it at 30, 30. But what if I move this to being the screen width by two and the screen height by two? That'll put us in the middle of the screen. 
The only other thing to change is this part here. This origin, if I want to draw from the middle of the sprite, I want to use the destination width by two and the destination height by two. Now we've got our apple dead in the middle of the screen on a little bit of a rotation. Just to make this a little bit more interesting to watch, we're gonna make it so the apple rotates 45 degrees per second. Now from here, I wanna make the apple a little bit larger. So the way I have this set up, I can just scale up the destination by two and it'll be twice the size that it was in the file. That looks pretty good. There's still a few more things to talk about with Draw Texture Pro. If I wanna flip the sprite, whether it's on the X or the Y, all I need to do is negate the size component of the axes that I want in the source rectangle. So if I wanna flip it vertically, I just need to make the source height negative. Now, originally I was grabbing the source width and height like this directly, but if we're doing that when we wanna be flipping the image, then the image isn't gonna appear anymore since it's going to be trying to draw to a negative space on the screen. So there we go, our apple's now upside down. Don't be afraid to mess with the source rectangle as well, by the way. If I create an apple index and define an apple count, then in our update logic, I can make it so that when we press the right key, we increase the apple index. And I could do the same thing for going left, but in the other direction. Then when we're choosing the source, instead of doing just zero, I can do apple size times the apple index. This should allow us to select different apples by choosing the arrow keys. And there we go, I can cycle through the apples. Now, if I'm bored of pressing the keys, I can actually automate this process. I'll create an apple timer and define an apple time. And every frame, I will reduce the value of the apple timer based on how long the last frame took. If that apple timer crosses zero, I'll reset it back to the full duration. And I'll increase the index at that time, just like we did when pressing the key. Now you're gonna have to trust me, I've got my hands off the keyboard and the apple's changing. If I reduce this apple time a lot, then what we have is basically an animation. And later when we cover sprite animations in Raylib, this is pretty much the approach that we're gonna use. The only thing is that usually animations are in frames per second. So now I can hike the FPS up to 10 and we can see that the apple's spazzing out like crazy. Doesn't know what it wants to be. Well, that pretty much wraps up everything I have to say today about drawing sprites in Raylib. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. And if you wanna see more like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Tune in next time when we cover how to build sprite animations in Raylib, use the end patch function to draw buttons, and how to build a simple Raylib game that will destroy the entire universe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.